Hi everyone, my name is Ben Green and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to get started on Airtable very fast, easily, and efficiently. I'm just going to be showing you the tips that you need to know to get started and build a CRM, do project management, whatever you need to do for your personal or for your business. A little bit about me, again my name is Ben Green and I'm the owner of Optimize IS and we help businesses move online, we help them work remotely, we help them optimize their data organize it and stuff like Airtable and Asana. Also do a lot of a lot of stuff in Slack and we help them optimize their workflows around these apps so that they can work very effectively remotely. So a little bit about Airtable as well. Airtable is a amazing software like spreadsheet tool. It's very similar to G Suite, very similar to Excel, but it's cloud-based and it's a relational database if you've ever heard of Microsoft Access. It's very similar to all of those combined basically. It's an amazing tool and the, there's so many use cases for it. I can't begin to list them all off, but yeah, we'll get right to the tutorial now. All right, so now getting started, you can just go down to the description, click that link and it says, I think it says sign up for Airtable. It'll bring you to this page and all you have to do for a free account, you don't have to pay anything um, unless you want to upgrade to a pro plan. You just put in your name Sign up, create a password, and then sign up for free. Once you create your account and log in, you'll see something similar to this. We have multiple workspaces open in here. I pulled up a few of the Airtable's template bases that they have pre-created for you. And to get to one of those templates, you just click here and start with a template and you can pick, there's a, there's a ton of these and they are very useful. However, I prefer to start from scratch. A few things to note before we go into that is you can share your plan with somebody on your team or like whoever you want to share your base with and they can have access, there's different rights. I think there's four different rights like they, they can have. Someone can just view, someone can come in and edit, they can be the owner as well as more. But we will just come in here and create a base. We're gonna start from scratch. And once you click that, you can pick a color for like the tile of your base. Like you can see there are multiple different colors up here. And you can see there are also different icons in here. So we will pick blue because that is simple. And I like this one a lot. A few other things to note is you can duplicate bases, move it to a different workspace. So I can move this one up here and you can also do Slack notifications. I'll go into all those integrations late in a later video with Slack and Airtable because it's incredibly powerful if you have a team that you want to work on. And then you can also click delete base, but we will just go in and with those settings and we're going to make this a project management base so we're going to rename this so i right click on that and then up here at the top we're just going to type project management now going into the base this is what it'll look like in your new fresh base you'll have these three fields here we're going to just go ahead and delete the second two because we don't need those. It's always the notes and the attachment. There are different field types, so you can come in here, right click on the, the top bar, and you can click customize field type. And this, you can give a name to your field first off. So for this, we're gonna do full name. And then if you come down here where it says single line text, this is where you pick your field name. So Airtable is different than something like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets in that it is a rela relational database. So it is essentially Microsoft Access, but it's cloud-based so you can work with your team. And it is a lot more user-friendly than Access. Ac Access is super clunky, but this is incredibly user-friendly. So you can come in here and change your field type by clicking on this. And the first field is not gonna have all of the options because it needs to be a unique field. So I'm going to do formula and I'm going to teach you a very little known formula that I like to use instead of doing strings. So we'll, we'll do that in a second because we need to create some other fields first. In this first table, we're going to create a table to track our, the people in our company. And then in another table, we'll create a table to track tasks and the power of the relational database like access, whereas not Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets is this is a relational database. So you'll be able to connect those without having all of the information in one sheet. And it, you can manage the data a lot more easily and 
you can do a lot more powerful things and you can connect three tables or four tables or however many tables you want in here with the 50,000 row limit. So it's a little bit, it's quite a bit less than Excel, but it is cloud-based. So you can work on it with the team. So it's super useful in that respect. So here we will do first name, keep that as a single line text and also last name. So I'll just put my name in here for start. Before we get too far again, because we're gonna go to this first field next, is this first field is a primary field in this relational database. And if you haven't used relational databases before, the primary field, whenever you link this record and another table, that's the field that's gonna be pulled in and it's gonna be the header of that record. You can also do lookup fields, but lookup fields are always for secondary fields. So for example, first name or last name. This first one is a primary field, so we want it to be unique. So that is why we're using the formula. All right, so now we will get started with the first field. So we will click customize field type. We will change this to full name. We will come down here and change this to formula. You always start your formulas with an equal sign and then you can type your formula. So they have like all of like the good accounting, like Excel ones for like numbers. So sum min, max and a ton like average stuff like that. And then they also have a lot of text functions as well. So you can pull out text strings out of different fields. But the one we are going to do is concatenate, which is a text function. And this is instead of, so once it pops up, you can see here, we'll do concatenate. This is instead of like combining different text strings. I like to do field referencing, which would be me just typing in first name here. I come down here and click on it and it puts it in the brackets. You could also type that out. And then I type in last name and we're gonna come back here in the middle and we're gonna put another comma there. And then in between those commas, we're gonna put a quote, space, quote. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna connect, concatenate the first name, a space, and then the last name. So it'll be a for, first name, space, last name. Save that, and then it'll pull in that every time. So if I type in John Doe, then it will pull in that in a little bit. So before we get too far, we are gonna to wanna to come up here and change our table name because we can have multiple tables and for one we'll have employees, for another we'll have tasks. So we're gonna come up here, just click on this little arrow right here, click rename table, and we will do employees. And you wanna do this so you know which data is where and you can easily find stuff. Now I will build out the rest of this employee sheet and I will show you how to use a few more of the field types. So another field type we might want to use is the phone number for our employees. So you, I just like to name them whatever data is being stored in that. So for this one, it'll be phone number. And it'll be typed like that. So, and it formats it for you. It'll always be in the same format, which is nice to look at. We will also want to keep their email and we can come down here and keep, keep their email in here. Another very useful one is the URL. So you can click URL, and then it has to be valid. So that's a link. If you need any Airtable help, you can go, go to that link. It's also in the description um, and you can request a consultation. You also can do more fields. So the, the ones further down there, more recently added and those are a little bit more complicated. So we'll leave that for more advanced tutorial. But another one that's really common and if you've ever heard of Kanban views or Kanban views, they use stuff like single select. So if you make a single select field, you can choose from a list. So we'll do department for this one. So we'll do marketing, finance, operations. And we'll save it at that. And some of these fields, depending on the one, you'll see it has a Kanban, like you can click it at the bottom, or you can come over here and click add the view from over here. But I like, I like to do it straight from here when I'm creating it. So we'll be able to see everybody in these. The Kanban view is particularly useful when you're in a, like it using Airtable as a CRM, which many people do. And you can see the people like that are cold leads, that are warm leads, and that are hot leads. 
as well as many other use cases as well. So we will change this to department. Another that we might want to use is something that's long text, so perhaps a description or like a bio that we might want to have in a company website or whatever that may be. So we will have long text here and we will have bio. What is unique about long text is that you can come in here and have multiple lines. So whereas single line text, like these first two columns that are not the primary field, you can have a bio, which you can have like Ben Green, and you can have multiple lines. So that doesn't look like much right there, but if we come up here to the top and we change the row height to say tall, you can see that it's multiple lines. Some more things you might want to note up here is if I came in here and I changed the departments to, and I assign these. You can come up and use the filter and you can filter. So say I only want to see people in the marketing department. I could change the mark, change it so the filter is only marketing. Another very similar view to the Kanban view is if you came up here and group, grouped it, it's kind of like a vertical Kanban view. And you just come up here and you click group by department and it will sort out everybody there. And then one, when I view in groups, I like to hide that field because it's kind of redundant seeing marketing up here, Ben Green's in marketing and department marketing over here. So if you right click on this, come down here and you can hide that field and then you don't have to see it, but it is still stored in there. Another very powerful feature of Airtable is you can expand the record. So to do that, you come over here and click on these two little arrows and you can see all of your data in here. And you can see I have one hidden field. So that field is still kept, but it is hidden from the view. It is also important to note for you guys, if you want to have different views with different information shown, you can. To do that, you just come over here and click add view. And now you can see department isn't, isn't hidden. There's no groups and it's just like all of the data when I click grid, this new grid, but you can also come in and add other filters, add other groups, sort it however you want, as well as use conditional formatting with color if you're familiar with that. So another field we might want to have is the hire date. And another view that I like to use on this one is the calendar. So maybe not specifically on hire date, but for task management for like due dates, uh, to have a calendar view in here is super powerful and you can even have times if you need to do stuff at certain times. So we'll keep that there and we'll do today, tomorrow, and yesterday. So now if we come back in here, we can click add calendar view from here or we can come back down here. I will just do it straight from here, just show you that that works. And you can see I was hired on this day, John Doe was hired tomorrow, and Jane Doe was hired yesterday. And we will come back up here and say hire date. You can name that whatever you like. All right, I hope that tutorial was very useful for you guys, and I hope you guys can now use Airtable seamlessly. Go ahead and click that link if you haven't already. Uh, get access for free to Airtable. Uh, also, go ahead and hit subscribe if you want more tutorials just like this. Uh, hit like so more people can find it and share it with their friends. Um, also, share it with a friend if you want. If you need consulting, if you need help with your business on setting up your information systems and you really don't want to learn how to do it, you can hit the request a consultation button in my YouTube channel or just like hit the request a consultation in the description of this video and we can talk.